Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Hope you're all doing really well today. I got some weird lighting going on. It was really hot today in California. It's like 80 degrees in our house right now, so all the windows are closed. So I'm using this weird artificial light, which is causing all this weird glare, so I apologize. I'm coming to you a little earlier in the week with my video. I'm gonna be traveling on Wednesday to fly to Booktopia in Vermont. I'll be gone flying all day Wednesday and then I'm gone <clears throat> all weekend and I come back on Monday, May 8th. So I'm trying to sneak in a video now and then um, hopefully I'll be able to do something while I'm traveling to kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on. What's this video going to be? It's going to be my April wrap up. Um, I read nine books in, Mar in March, in April. I just said April wrap up. Um, I read nine books in April and um, most of them were very, very good, so I want to definitely tell you about them and get them on your radar so that you can read them. I'm going to start with two books I, um, from Unnamed Press. Now, I talked about Unnamed Press in the past. Mercedes over at Mercy's Musings had did a whole episode on them. I had gone and read, uh, ordered a couple books myself, and this month I read two of the three books that um, I bought from them. So I want to tell you about them. I will link Unnamed Press below so that you can go to their website and order from them. They are an, a little independent publisher here in California, and um, I think they're really awesome. So the first one that I read was The Paper Man by Gallagher Lawson. Now I will tell you, this book is very thought-provoking. So what is it about? It's about Michael. Michael is a man made of paper. We find out through the story that there's been some of, sort of accident where he lives and his father basically saves his life by putting his essence into paper. Um, he and his family live inland in this unknown uh, sort of country and Michael is tired of the life, the protected life his father has for him. So he runs away to the city which is on the beach. Um, he takes the money uh, that he has been kind of stealing from his family business and he's going to start his life um, over and, and anew. And um, it's really the story of how you identify yourself and how you allow other people to define who you are. And until you stop doing that, you really can't be yourself. So Michael, originally when he gets to the city, he's caught in a rainstorm. And of course he's made of paper and water, doesn't do well with paper. And he is saved by a woman. And she's kind of the first section of the novel. She um, creates the person that he starts as in the city. And then he goes to an art exhibit and he finds a painting of a woman that he knows from where he came from and who he was in love with in his teenage years. And he kind of hunts her down and she becomes the second aspect. She's um, more avant-garde. She lives life on the edge um, and really doesn't have respect for others in the way that Michael has in the past. She is dating an artist and that artist becomes really the third person that defines Michael because what happens is Michael needs that artist to kind of recreate parts of who he is because as you can imagine over time paper in weather and with trauma um, suffers. So those are really the three. There's a fourth person named Adam but I don't want to tell you much about him because he gets a little bit more into what's going on in the story. Um, the novel is beautifully written. It's a weird sort of twisted metaphor for finding oneself after being created by others. His father invented him first, and then all these other people, he allows these other people to control who he thinks he is. Um, and it's, it's just really, really good. So that's The Paper Man by Gallagher Lawson. I really highly recommend it. Um, Unnamed Press, really good. And then the second book I read by them, again, I'm going to say, cover your ears if you don't like curse words. Um, this is The Fine Art of Fucking Up by Kate Dickery. This is a... <laughs> This is an academic novel, I, I guess is what I would call it. This is the story of Nina. Nina is sort of the, I'll say she's like the associate dean of an arts college. Um, she works for a woman who has become obsessed with romance novels and is not doing her job. And the art school where she works is un, in danger of um, being flooded because there's a huge storm coming by. Um, the novel starts with her going, with our main character Nina, going to dinner with her husband, and her husband kind of saying to her, I want to have a kid. It's time for us to have a kid, and Nina not being there in that space, not thinking they're ready for a child, 
And the weird character she works with as she works through this issue in her marriage and also with the people that she works with at the school who are trying to sabotage the department and then also trying to save the department from flooding. Um, it is a quirky book. I didn't expect it to go where it did. Um, I enjoyed it greatly. I don't think I liked Nina very much, but I don't think that that was really that important. Um, but by the end of the novel, I definitely respected a lot of the choices that she made. So I highly recommend The Fine Art of Fucking Up by Kate Dickery. And I'm probably saying that wrong, you guys. Dichery? Or, yeah, I apologize. But I really liked your book. So the next two things that I read were actually graphic novels. Um, I need a little palette cleanser, something to move me forward. And the first one I got um, from watching both Simon and Jean talk about it on their channels. I'll link both of their channels below. And that's Paper Girls. It is by, I want to say it's by Brian K. Vaughn. Now, Brian K. Vaughn wrote something else that is totally escaping me that I've read and I've also liked. But Paper Girls is kind of like a 1988 version of Stranger Things. It's the story of, if you haven't watched Stranger Things on Netflix, I highly recommend it. Um, Paper Girls is four girls who deliver the newspaper and they get kind of caught up in this sci-fi war between these two different factions from the future who are trying to steal things from the past. There are aliens. There are boys who are deformed who try to win their trust, but can they trust them? There are monsters. It's it's super crazy. It's super entertaining. Um, I already bought the second one. I'll probably read it this month, and I'm really excited about it. The art is really cool. It's very um, monotone in color, but it definitely packs a punch, um, and I really liked it. That was Paper Girls um, by Brian K. Vaughn. Um, the second one I read was uh, Black Panther. Um, it was written by Tanashi Coates. Um, Tanashi Coates wrote a, a very, very, very um, powerful uh, book, nonfiction book last year, which I'm sure we've all read, Between the World and Me, which is a letter to his son about being black in America. And he took over the Black Panther myth and kind of relaunched it. This is very political. It's very much about an uprising, um, people not happy with the monarchy. The Black Panther is the king of his kingdom. Um, I will say that in the beginning I was a little confused. It does assume you know a little bit of the history of the Black Panther, Panther comic, but it does eventually kind of get you where you need to go. So don't let that deter you because the art is fantastic. The story is engrossing. Um, the sort of political discussion is timely and um, I really enjoyed it and I read it really quick and um, bought the second one of this one as well so that's Black Panther by Tanahashi Coates and I apologize both of those they have artists um, attached to them I don't know who they are and I know that there are quite a few um, I don't want to disregard their great aspects of both of those they were both very very good and um, I will link how to purchase them below um, as I said, I'm getting ready to go to Booktopia. So the next two books that I read were for Booktopia. Um, the next one is Celine by Peter Heller. Now I told you guys, and you guys know, because I, I get it in the comments all the time, my thing for an old lady. Um, Celine is actually a woman in her late 60s, early 70s, who um, is a private investigator. She comes from money, and she's chosen this life, and she's kind of been the black sheep of her family because of it. Um, the book takes place basically one year after 9-11. She lives in New York. She's been affected by that. But also in that year, both of her sisters have passed away. So she's kind of going through that transition in her life where the people she loves are gone and the city she loves has been rocked. She's approached by a woman who um, we find is on in the search for her father. Her father has disappeared in a weird way. He was He's a wildlife photographer and supposedly he was attacked and killed by a bear, but she doesn't believe it. So she hires Celine to search out her father. Now this is a story, that's the plot, but the plot is not the important part of this book. This book is very much about Celine, her husband, the people they meet. It's very much a character study about how the world we live in affects us, how we watch others and learn from others. Um, as I said in a previous video, this is my third Peter Heller book that I've read. Um, I really like the dog stars. I didn't care for the painter, and I think Celine may be my favorite. 
It is beautifully written, um, great, great prose. He is from Denver. Part of it goes through like Yosemite, and he is great at describing that area. Um, the only problem I have with the book is that he would sometimes give you like stage direction before you read dialogue. He would say, pause, and then have a line of dialogue, and I found that a little awkward. But um, other than that, I thought it was great. I flew through it. I love Celine. I hope it becomes a series. Um, I would read all about her. So that's Celine by Peter Heller. Um, the next book I read, unfortunately, is my first DNF, I want to say, of the year. And I don't want to say that it's because of the book. That's Our Short History by Laura um, Grodstein. Um, I hauled this in uh, my spring haul. This is a book about a woman who finds out she's dying of ovarian cancer, and she has a six-year-old son. And her six-year-old son has asked her that she, she, he wants to know his father. He's never met his father. Um, it turns out his father did not want to have children when they were together, and um, so she never told him she actually had the child, and now it's come to that point where she is dealing with her mortality at the same time her son wants to meet her his father. Now, my issue with this book is the character, the main character, is writing it as a book to her child. So it is a woman writing to her six-year-old, and the tone she takes is like she's talking to a six-year-old. So when you're reading the book, it's like she's talking to you like your six-year-old. And I, I couldn't handle it. I struggled mightily with sort of that um, trope, that way of going through and telling this story. Um, so I stopped about halfway. I wasn't disliking the story. I just couldn't handle the way she was talking to me. So it may be something if you like points of view from children or you can really deal with that sort of discussion po point of view, you may really like this book. But it just wasn't for me, but not because I didn't think that it was a bad story. I just couldn't handle the way it was written. And that was Our Short History by Laura Grodstein. Um, the next book I read is probably one of the most talked about books that came out this year, and that is Lincoln and the Bardo by George Sanders. This is my book, one of my two book club books, I gotta get on my second one, um, that I had to read. And this is really the tale of two parts for me. I had never read John Sa George Saunders. As I said in the past, um, I'm not a huge, I wasn't a huge stor short story person. I have to stop saying that because I've read some pretty amazing short story collections lately um, and have really changed my mind. But he, that was what he's done. This is his first novel. I personally feel the first half of this book is a train wreck. Um, it is trying too hard to be clever. Um, it's told in kind of spurts. Um, there, it's the story of Abraham Lincoln and his son. His son, who is 11, passes away um, just in the beginning of the Civil War. And it's the story of putting his son to rest. And it's told in two ways. One way is these snippets that are almost like they're from articles or diaries or people who knew the Lincolns and they're kind of telling you a story, but it's a couple lines here, a couple lines there, a couple lines here. Some of it I hear is made up, some of it is actually real, from real books, from real hit sources, and you can't tell which, and you don't know what the point of that is. The other story is set in the actual graveyard, and it is also told in this sort of same method where it's one line from a ghost speaking, one line from a ghost speaking, and this kind of round robin effect of telling the story. And it really didn't work to me when he was just in the start of it trying to move his story along. But there comes a point, there's a character in uh, a ghost in the um, graveyard who is a reverend. Most of the ghosts don't realize they're dead. They think that in the beginning of the book they're talking about, this is a little bit of a spoiler, so pause me or move forward. They're talking about just kind of their life. He comes to the, he knows, he knows who he is and he knows where he's at. And um, there's a section, it's a couple pages long, where I realized the brilliance of George Saunders. It was almost like a short story and it really changed the tone of the book. The tone then becomes sort of this meditation on dealing with your mortality, not dealing with your mortality, dealing with grief and how to move past it. Lincoln has to move past the grief of his son. He's leading the United States through the Civil War, so he can't allow that to bog him down. That becomes a very powerful sort of story. Um, so about halfway through, I think the book turns out to be freaking brilliant. 
Um, but I really struggled. If it wasn't for book, to, uh, book Club, I think I probably would have stopped. But I would tell you, read it, because the second half of the book is amazing. So that's Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. I know I'm probably in the minority. A lot of people love every inch of this book. Um, but I definitely recommend it, but I do find the beginning of it to be a slog. So there you go. Two more, okay? I had a good reading month. I read nine books. I'm almost done with an audiobook. I was hoping to finish it before I did this video, but I have about an hour left. Um, so the next book I read was Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sojin. This is an Icelandic novel. It is translated, I want, um, translated by Victoria Cribb. Um, I'm not going to say a lot about this book because the idea of it is it's such a mystery and such a twist. I don't want to give any of it away. But it's really the story of an orphan boy who in, in Reykjavik who is moved there to live with his aunt who is his, actually it maybe like his grandma's aunt or grandma's sister or something. Um, it's removed, but she's the only living relative that she that he has, um, and he hustles to earn money on the side. I will tell you right now, this is not for the faint of heart. This is not a PJ book. This is definitely an R-rated and sometimes a little bit more book, but it's really the story of this boy in Reykjavik dealing with the world that he lives in. The Spanish flu comes in and kills a bunch of people. He's obsessed with films and he's obsessed with this girl that he saw at the films and she reminds him of a film star. And it's kind of just about him building who he is and the world around him. It takes some really twisted turns. It's not very big. I read it in two days and two sittings. I thought it was fantastic. It's beautifully written. Um, he has a way with words, but again, I'll just say it's not for everybody and it does have sort of an R rating, so be prepared for that. It starts right at the beginning, um, so I don't want you to be misled by that. But I really enjoyed Moonstone, The Boy Who Never Was by Sojin. Turns out he was one of the writers for the movie Dancers the Dancer in the Dark that Bjork was in. Isn't that interesting? I have one more book and my video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to run past it real quick. That's The Doll's Alphabet by Camille Grudova. This is a collection of short stories I just was telling you. I This short story collection proves to me everything wrong about short stories. This is a quirky, weird, fantastic set of short stories. Um, the first short story that just grabbed me, it's only three pages, it's about these women who learn at the very beginning that they can unstitch their skin and underneath they look like giant ants and they become who they are and they change the world and the world around them it is really powerful it's really a big statement about knowing who you are there are crazy stories in here about a man who's part spider there are stories in here about um oh my god there's just so many um there's just so many i don't even know what to tell you guys all i will say is that i read everyone in awe um and I, oh my gosh, there's this great story about these two girls who ride this bicycle and these like ghost-like figures appear only when they're there and the obsession that comes and the mental illness that comes from that and escaping it and how you don't ever really get away from it. Um, it is so good. And um, I don't know, I'm going to link um, it to Book Depository because I don't think you can get it here in the U.S. at any of our retailers, but I really enjoyed it. I will read anything from Camilla Grudova or even Fritz Carlotto Editions puts forward, because I just thought this was really brilliant, and I highly, highly recommend it. So that's The Doll's Alphabet by Camilla Grudova, and that was a collection of storage stories. So that was my reading for the month of April. Um, thank you guys. I'm sorry this video is a little long. Um, I just wanted to tell you about them. Most of them I would highly, highly recommend. Um, I'll probably be gone for a little bit, but I will hopefully have some great contact after Booktopia. I hope you're all doing well. Talk to me in the comments below. If you're new, thank you. Subscribe. Um, if you're back, I always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. It's great to talk to you guys. Have a good one. Bye.